Hey, Josh Powers with Quixel. Today, as we continue our dive into the Mixer Math Stack, we're going to go over the Posterize modifier. So let's get started. The formal description of the Posterize modifier is that it involves conversion of a continuous gradation of tone to several regions of fewer tones. To put it plainly, this modifier will take the gradation of your mask and give it kind of a stair-stepping effect based on the step count you apply in the modifier. For example, a step count of 2 will give you just a black and white mask generated based on the closest underlying values. However, as we bump the steps up, we can see that we start to get the gradient coming back in. I've used Posterize several ways, but the most common way I use it is to give a stylized painterly look to assets, especially assets that are already photorealistic, such as Megascans. So here I have this wooden post, but the high frequency detail of the texture is a bit too much for this project I'm working on. So let's see if we can make it feel a bit more stylized, mainly using curvature and posterize. We'll activate this solid layer above the base layer, which gives us a brownish tan color. The first thing I'll do is disable displacement, and then I'll adjust the blur underlying. The higher the blur, the more it will remove the base normal map of the model. In this case, I want to blur out some of the finer details of the normal map, but keep the larger ones, so setting the slider to 4 seems to be a good middle ground. The next layer is a standard solid layer, and we'll go ahead and add a mask stack. Because Posterize is a modifier, we need mask data for it to actually modify. So we'll go ahead and drop in a curvature component first. For this one, we'll simply tweak the levels a little bit, and that's it. Now if we throw on a Posterize, we're already getting some cool effects right away. I think 4 will work in this instance, and then we'll just add a Gaussian blur with a very low strength to soften the edges a little bit. And then lastly for this layer, we'll add a gradient remap and pull the range sliders in ever so slightly. Alright, let's turn on the next layer, which is another solid layer with a default albedo color. We'll set the albedo blend mode to add, and then lower the opacity way down so that it's not too intense. Then we'll add a mask stack, and then drop in a curvature component. I want this to act as some edge highlights, so we'll set the drop down to edges only, and then crunch the right level slider down to get some nice highlights on those edges. We can then add another posterize modifier and leave the step count at 2, which crisps up those edges nicely. Then, as before, we add a bit of a blur to slightly soften those edges. The next layer will give us some darkness in the crevices. This solid layer is also the default albedo value, except we'll switch to blend mode to multiply, and then pull back on the opacity a tad. We'll use a very similar technique for the mask, using a curvature component, but setting it to cavities only, and then adjusting the levels a bit before dropping in a posterize modifier with a step count of 3. And if we go back to PVR mode, we have some nice darker details in those crevices. And then lastly, for a bit of extra character, we'll activate this red solid layer, which also has the albedo multiplied and the opacity reduced. And then we'll add a position gradient modifier, and then another coming from the opposite direction with the blend mode set to add, to give a little bit of a directional color on this piece. And there you have it. If we go into albedo mode by pressing 2 on the keyboard, we can see exactly what we are able to accomplish with the posterized modifier, taking a photorealistic high frequency asset and quickly giving it a look that will better fit with a stylized fantasy world. Though it only has one setting, the Posterize modifier can really transform your textures into something completely different, and I hope this video helped you get a better understanding on how to use it. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and we'll see you in the next one.